Hi, so another episode of Too Many Cars. Um, we went up to the Hubnut Social last weekend and it was having an amazing time, met Ian and met um, this wonderful chap called Carl. I'm going to tell you a bit more about Carl. He's got a beautiful uh, golf called Project Vinny. Uh, I think uh, I think I'll include a link in the description to this email so that you can see what that's about. But um, we went up in the Daihatsu, uh, the, the one with the flowers all over it, and um, we had a bit of an incident coming back on in Manchester where we got rear-ended. Now the man had promised to, uh, to to pay us back for, for, for some repairs, but um, I'll just show you what's happened. We um, we got rear-ended down here, and you can see uh, it, it looks a lot better than it was, but, and that's because <laughs> you can see down in 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 there everything's been put back together. We had. Um, we had a piece of the inner wing fouling the rear wheel um, that was put together back, put uh, sort of bent back with a crowbar by the recovery truck, and then we managed to limp back to Vinnie's, um, to Carl's house in Stoke on Trent. And um, props to uh, to Carl and to to, to Kaz for, for being really, and his mum for for being hugely hugely helpful to us, uh, and, and we're so thankful. Um, but today. The sun has finally come out, you can see the clear blue sky, and we are going to be attacking <laughs> the wiper motor on the um, on the Rover 216 Cabriolet, and giving it a go, seeing how we fare. I think it's going to be an easy job, but um, the intermittent wipe essentially hasn't been working very well, and also it, just, it, it simply just doesn't park itself properly and I think that's a relatively common issue with the relays on these things. I've got a, a new old, well, I've got a part from a breaker's yard, I think it looks like it's the right one. Um, I think it's from the, tw I, think it, I think this one is actually from the 25, the later model. Um, this is a relatively late car, or at least it's the later 200 bubble shape rather than the 216. So I've got the, I've got the manual from the 25 here, because some of these parts are quite, you know, they're very interchangeable in these cars. And um, hopefully that will, hopefully we'll be able to put it back together. I'm going to change the mount here so that you can see a bit better what's going on as I as I work, and then I'll talk you through it. There'll probably be quite a bit of grunting, and I don't even know whether this this part we're about to fit actually works. So come with me on an adventure. Oh, just to, just to make things a bit easier, I've actually added this battery isolator this morning. Um, the car's been sitting over the winter, and uh, the battery was has been charged up for, for today, but I don't quite know what to do. And, um, I'd, I'd rather, you know, rather than getting the battery out every time, I'd rather just have an isolator switch so that I can turn it off and it makes it a bit, bit more convenient. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, we'll get on with that. So I'm going to get a 10mm socket on this and see how far we get. I'll loosen the bracket. I don't quite know how many bolts we've got to undo. It looks like there might be one all the way under there, underneath the or behind the suspension, the top of the suspension mount. So it might be a bit tricky to get at that. But these ones are coming. Yeah, that's up pretty easily. But it's only really when you look at when you're doing these things that you notice stuff. You can see a bit of rust developing down there on what looks like the engine mounts, so that might be an issue in the future. Oh, it's fun, isn't it? I just love how much more space there is to work in this than in the Metro. It's, <laughs> it's quite, quite nice to be able to see everything. So apparently I need to pull this back to get access to the wiper linkage. I'm going to put some penetrating fluid on that, but 
So it looks like this does easily come away and you don't have to touch that bottom bolt. And the bracket will just unhook. This is the nut that I've got to get undone to um, unlink these and then the whole assembly will come away and I'll be able to unclip um, the wires. I think that will free things up enough. Now what size are you? So we have got that out with a half inch um, socket or a half inch spanner and as you can see the bulkhead down there is the access isn't great so what I've done is what I did is I did it by hand with both fingers just to make sure that the, the nut didn't disappear down in through the bulkhead. Um, I think that's probably something to note because otherwise you're probably in danger of losing that nut. So I've managed to unhook that from a, a big yank. Um, as you see, that does disappear back down into the bulkhead, but it doesn't go very far, so that's fine. Um, because of the splines on that bolt, it does need, it does get a bit firm. So I, I did put a bit of penetrating fluid on that and then waited a bit and yanked it out properly and it's it's kind of okay. Um, and then I, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but it's then just a matter of unclipping that and we're basically free apart from just having to snip that off. So I'll go and get some pliers and do that off screen and um, that's it. I think hopefully it's just a matter of, you know, assembling that in, this, in well, the reverse of disassembly, hopefully. So it is sort of amazing the amount of crud that's building that builds up here. I've just taken basically a whole forest full of leaves out of this recess here. So just where the, the, the bulkhead is, it just needs a bit of cleaning up. And um, I've poured some penetrating fluid down there, and I hope, hopefully, um, I'll just be able to wipe that back and then. Um, maybe put some sort of some sort of treatment on it as well just to sort of make sure it doesn't um make sure that the uh, nasty corrosion bug stays away um yeah and then it's time to put it back together so if assembly is the reverse of disassembly all the priorities have to be linking this back up that has to be the main priority Let's put that on there. Let's see how much easier it slides on. I think he says. Yeah. Now what I am slightly worried about is the alignment of this damn thing. This uh what position is it in? So that's on mounted to the housing. Let's get this damn thing connected up. It is difficult to access this when it's behind the bulkhead like that. Then let it slide onto the mounting. I think the only thing to do is just put it together and see how it sits a visual inspection just to make sure that it feels like it's lined up the way it was before. Not losing the nut. It's like keyhole surgery. That is on-ish. I don't think it's immediately going to slide off. Let's line up the... Yeah, I think that kind of does look Roughly right. Tighten this up. Let's see what happens. Just a visual 
inspection seems to suggest that that's on in the way that it's intended to be. I think I might. So we're back in. I've been mucking around. I think the camera seems to have dropped out and missed some bits, but um, we're roughly where we were when I started, but we're just trying to get things back in. It's It, it seems important to get the bottom um, the bottom bolt on the bracket secure um, because it was difficult to seat that um, the bracket on these washers you can see these little washers here it's difficult to seat that blind underneath so I've seated it um, and bolted it in before this section now I'm just tightening up the um, the linkage there and we'll see where we get to this up now. This is a linkage. I said before that I'm probably going to take the take the wiper arms off and then run the motor vertically first just to test that we're all in the right position. That I'm gonna have to this here uh, has well this part's become from the scrap pick but they've obviously just cut that so I'm gonna have to find a cable tie. Oh, it does not seem to enjoy being seated at that point. Oh, and of course that's come out of the bottom one now. <laughs> Try that. You've got to waggle it so much that you can't... Um, it doesn't feel easy to guarantee it's going to be in a position. Is there any brand of relatively modern vehicle that's actually easy to work on? You don't get like this on a Morris Minor. situation you just need a hand to hold while you guide the fact that this is so difficult to see makes me think Jesus really so I want to be over here a bit more it feels like it's the linkage that's stopping me when they refuse to put, go back together again, that's the problem. Right, so after all that faffing, um, my battery died on the phone, so we didn't record uh, the moment after, the moments after that. It was getting more and more irate. I managed eventually to get the um, the unit, the, the the brackets seated on the on the bulkhead and screwed up properly. Um, 
the alignment seemed to be okay. Um, it's actually the wipers are actually sitting a bit lower on the on the on the screen than they used to, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that someone has previously attempted this job and and not succeeded, and I think that that's the reason that they were sitting high originally, and now they're back down to where they were. So I think that that's resolved itself, and um, we now have uh, working wiper motors. So let's give it a go. They stop. They go. They go faster. They go intermittent. Do they? They do. So that is a bit of a relief being able to have the wiper motors that actually sort of park themselves rather than having to sort of manually turn them off. Um, that's you know, for a convertible, you're generally driving around in fine weather. It doesn't really that ma matter that much, but it was enough of an irritation to, to really not make me enjoy driving the car. It was just one of those things that was getting in the way. I also find this car a bit big. It's probably actually quite small for, for most people. I mean, it's only a Rover 200. It, it's a, it's a, based on a, a hatchback. It's not an enormous car but to me it feels quite bulky and barge like and also the, in the process of getting the uh, roof chopped off there is quite a lot of scuffle shake and it does wobble a bit and um, it doesn't feel like a, a nimble dynamic little thing like the Metro for example um, but it's it's I, I do I do enjoy the car I'm still not sure about whether it'll be sold but um, I've got a few things to investigate on it, and uh, I noticed that the, the fuel, the the, um, the fluid level on the, the coolant is, is 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 sort of lower than it was a couple of weeks ago, and I, I just I don't don't quite know what's going on there because that that if that's happening, what's running, it seems like there's a it feels like there's a leak there somewhere. So I think I'm just gonna gonna monitor that situation and work out where the leak is coming from, and then try to that might be an interesting job. <laughs> um, See how see where that goes. Uh, the car is getting quite mouldy inside. I've been sat here for so for so long. I've washed the I've washed the cover today, uh, the the hood. Um, hopefully that will stop any sort of mould building up, and I'll put the car cover back on it afterwards. So um, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, that was a, a bit strange, but probably the next thing probably will be something to do with the metro. Um, maybe even a drive. Not sure. I've got some issues to sort out with the Metro, and I'll probably explain in that video what I mean. Okay. Well, thank you for watching, and take care. Bye. You don't get like this on a Mars Miner.